everybody. I'm Danielle McLean. I'm Drea Hickman. I am Rishabh Shrestha. And I'm Devin Kim. Welcome to the High Sky Pod. We are so excited today to wish you all a very happy World Environment Day. Yeah, this is June 5th, the day that uh, worldwide is celebrated the World Environment Day, and a lot of people have never heard of it, which is sad. And I want you to know about it today. It's a, a global effort to make a difference for our planet. And this year's theme is about uh, re reusing plastics and avoiding use of plastics. The plastics in the environment cause a lot of damage. Of course, many people have heard that over the years, and we've been uh, in, exposed to it, but I'll just read this to you real quickly about what the World Environment Today, Day is about this year. According to the UN, more than 400 million tons of plastic is produced every year worldwide. Wow. And half of it is designed to be only used one time. Mm. And of that, less than 10% is recycled. So an estimated 19 to 23 million tons end up in lakes, rivers, and seas annually. <laughs> Microplastics find their way into food, water, and air. And it's estimated that each person on the planet consumes more than 50,000 plastic particles per year. Mm -hmm. And many more if inhalation is also considered. Therefore, to keep global warming in check, we must have annual greenhouse gas emissions cut, have, I should say, annual greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. I say more than half, but um, without action, exposure to air pollution beyond safe guidelines will increase by 50% within the decade. And so the plastic waste flowing into the ecosystem will triple by 2040. Mm. And you can imagine how much more will be going into your body by then. <laughs> Um, yeah, not to mention all the other you know, side effects of global warming we'll be experiencing at that time, but we have to worry about that. So um, this year, governments and company stakeholders um, are trying to scale up and speed up actions to solve the crisis um, with uh, plastics. And if some of you may have uh, read my article from earlier, earlier this year, talked about how we could actually make um, hydrogen from use waste plastics, which is a wonderful use for waste plastics. But the best thing to do is don't buy them, don't use them, but if you must, recycle them. So yeah, that's I, my story for today. I love that they're doing that. I saw um, a TikTok video yesterday about a company, I don't remember the name of it, but they're working on uh, like like cylinders, not cylinders, like cinder blocks that are made out of plastic. Making them um, into permanent structures so that they're not waste. Yeah, that's that's yeah, brilliant. So they're building <laughs> like homes out of them. Mm -hmm. That's great. Oh, and also this is the 50th anniversary of the World um, Environment Day. So wow, this is interesting. I, it looks like they're doing a fashion thing with fans, and um, I'm obsessed with this. Um, very interesting. <laughs> I just found it on the World Environment Day uh, homepage. Was one of the stories, so that's really interesting. Um, well, cool. Thanks for sharing that, Drea. I didn't even know that June 5th was World Environment Day, so. Now I've got I didn't it until this morning on the radio, so yep. it was great to hear that. So I'm so. super excited to talk about the acquisition of this Sikorsky plant in Coatesville by Piasecki. Piasecki Aircraft Corporation has purchased the former Sikorsky Heliplex facility in Coatesville, Pennsylvania to transform it into a research and development center for next gen vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The facility will be used to build and test Piasecki's upcoming PA-80, P, sorry, PA-890, a zero emission rotorcraft powered by hydrogen fuel cells. The company plans to have the facility operational by fall 2023 and expects to employ up to 400 workers by 2028 as the PA 890 enters production. P Piasecki's expansion into Coatesville has received support from local and state government figures and demonstrates its commitment to bringing the PA 890 to market. And this is just an iconic photograph because in 
it's, it's you know some of you remember that high sky society spun out of the vertical flight society and a lot of the folks in this group were original presenters and participants in the h2e vtol council which we did under the vertical flight society here's mike hirschberg former executive director of vertical flight society john piasecki martin rothblatt ceo of united therapeutics Val Mitkoff, CEO of Zero Avia, and then many others in this photograph. So this is just an iconic photograph, and it's the first public article that I've seen showing Martine Rothblatt involved in hydrogen aviation, which um, is just super exciting to me. So definitely all these folks are ones that you're going to want to watch. Well, I mean, fall 2023, that sounds like a pretty, like, very fast-paced timeline to get this plan in operation. So already, I can only imagine there's been a lot of groundwork going on behind the scenes. That's mm -hmm. super exciting yeah. stuff. I think yeah, they've exactly. probably been in stealth mode. <laughs> yep. And, you know, flying high is fall 2023. So, you know, we've had a few companies looking to do press releases at Flying High, maybe there will be another one related to this because that's also in fall 2023. So lots and lots and lots of exciting things coming this fall. So excited about that. Yeah, this um, is a, the Piyaseki family. I see a lot of his family members and possibly maybe it's not it's like this is the generational business of investing in in um, innovative aircraft so I expect really great things from this collaboration and he's got some some powerful investors here that really um know what they're doing so I think this is a good combination I'm excited to see what they come up with really on a new plane that's really really quick you know and I'm yeah. excited about the jobs in hydrogen aviation that is such a the godsend to me I love hearing that I love that we're going to have people that are specifically working on this, 400 more of them potentially in, in four years, and um, they're going to need to know everything they, they can about hydrogen. We're, we'll, we'll teach them. <laughs> yep. And for those of you that don't know who Martine Rothblatt is, this woman is iconic and critical, a critical force in the eVTOL sector. She's invested in so many different companies and her passion is really to mass produce organs and deliver them via aircraft, but she doesn't wanna trash the planet while doing so. And we're gonna have a lot more coming up on Martine Rothblatt. Um, she's just, she's the only person that I met to date in aviation that I felt shared every single one of my values. Um, that's just never happened. Oftentimes being a woman in aviation, I felt like I didn't fit in. My co-founder of my last company was transgender. She was also a medical doctor. We were both really passionate about saving the planet. She was passionate about saving lives. I was passionate about aviation. And so we wanted to bring all of that together into one company, which is what we did at Happy Takeoff. And then we met Martine and it was like we were completing each other's sentences the day that we met her. So we're going to be covering tons of stuff about Martine and what she's up to and some really exciting announcements coming soon. Um, but just, just, yeah, we're, we're just super excited about this news of her actually, you know, there's a public article about her being involved in hydrogen aviation. So, and one of her board members, Shola is one of our board members. So we share that in common. Um, and Shola is just a great, great, great guy um, that, you'll you'll be seeing more of so um that is martine rothblatt and piasecki aircraft so we're super excited about that okay so let's move on to destinus um rashad do you want to tell us a little bit about this article yeah sure it's um it's something um uncommon that we we haven't seen uh with a lot of hydrogen uh based aircraft and so this caught my attention uh, this is about Destinus Aerospace. It's a European aerospace company, and they're developing a hydrogen hypersonic plane. And uh, this Whoa. February, they, they recently they, they tested their third demonstrator, the Destinus 3, 
Um, so if you if you look at the at the plane, the demonstrator it, it uses a hypersonic plane design, and they said they they're going to have a ramjet. The, the aircraft or the craft is basically flies and ramps into the air, ah. and that causes compression. And uh, that compression uh, basically it compresses a lot of air, and that causes a uh, a, a quite you know a supersonic um, travel so you can go beyond um, Mach five. And who is this least. talking? Who oh, is so she? this is uh, this is Martina Lofquist. She's a senior development manager at Distance. So we and, just talked uh, about Martine Rothblatt, and then we and have Martina, Martina. How do you say her last name? Lofquist. Uh, I think cool. it's. Uh, L O F Q V. Their names sound similar. Yeah, so um, I I I don't know much about her, um, but wh whatever they're doing is really really um, uh, I I would say um, I would say fantastic, but also you know um, nostalgic because we've seen we've seen Concord happening and then disappearing, and so again going back to their their power plant, they call it a hydrogen fed air turbo rocket um mm. mouthful um but basically it's just a ramjet that um that uh is fed hydrogen instead of air and then it will reach supersonic speeds um and they plan to go from you know uh i think from from the u.s to china in like three hours instead of 14 um which which is crazy and um they said that they're gonna make like planes which will have like a at least like less than 100 people for the first one but it will be pretty comfortable and it would be cheaper than the concord uh eventually nice. but well, that's uh, really when they cool. they're obviously doing i'm uh, sorry to interrupt but they're obvious uh -huh. when i asked chat gpt to summarize their company uh -huh. chat gpt told me that they were using fuel one. sec fuel cell technology but they're clearly doing combustion which makes more sense because I was like, how are they going to go supersonic with fuel cells? Um, and if you don't that, know that why I'm right. saying that, make sure to attend our <laughs> our hydrogen right. aviation workshop and course in October on October 9th, because we'll kind of cover the difference between fuel cells um, and engines, combustion engines. But anyway, please continue. Right. Yeah, so the, that one was the destinous one. Um, um you know chat gpt basically has a cutoff of somewhere like the the fall of 2021 so and that was when destinous started in 2021 no, i was using gpt4 which is live oh ah. yeah so mm. yeah i don't maybe, know where, maybe, uh, where we went wrong <laughs> cause, no because they're tech because on their website they're, they're they don't have a lot of uh those those details so maybe it didn't gotcha have, hasn't it hasn't compiled them so anyway, so um, these guys said they will use liquid hydrogen and eventually green hydrogen, and um, and so uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, it it should be um, if they can do what they say they they will. Um, it, it probably might be another awesome use case for hydrogen. You know, um, uh, EV tall and and uh, regional. Uh, aviation uh, have, have been, you know, it, it's been a focus for everyone right now. Yep. But maybe this is something that might actually give, um, give, you know, the 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 run for the money because hydrogen has been used as a rocket fuel for for forever uh, yeah. in my history. So yeah, could be something. Cool. I did you get the timeline really... on these from them by any chance, Rashad? Yeah. Do you know Good what question. their pro projections yeah. are? Said, they said that they would um, they would have um, a full scale prototype by next year, 2024, and um, if they can, they would have uh, um, a plane, you know, a, a large plane um, for for uh, testing by 2026. Um, and they've raised like 29 million till date, as far as I know, but uh, maybe they are going to. They have read from some more. They have not disclosed, um, but yeah, it, it's it does uh, seem like a uh, you know like a long uh, project for the long term. I just think it's great to think about getting you here in three hours. I mean, three hours. That's brilliant, both of y'all. <laughs> so yeah, it, yeah. I mean, like then then the you know the uh, a lot of people can do like more like not just like digital nomads. We can be really nomads. 
<laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, and like I, I want to learn more about her. She would be uh, she a is great a, person to have yeah. at Flying High, and um, on High Sky Pod. I want to know yeah. more about her. Um, Me too. It, it's so exciting. She's also a member of Women of Green Hydrogen. Andrea and I are both. Oh, she's in that with me then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and which means we can contact her on there. Yeah. I mean, we can yeah. reach out on yeah. LinkedIn as well. But I'm yeah. I'm so excited about the diversity in hydrogen like just the group of mm -hmm. us right here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how and Dabin's in uh South Korea Rishav's in Nepal Dre is in Oklahoma I'm in Texas and we have like nothing back. yet we have everything in common because we're all <laughs> passionate about the same things and I just love the different types of people that we're connecting to in hydrogen um so yeah really exciting what how many you might have said this already but is this like so this, this is, is a, scale this prototype? is yeah yeah this is the, this is destinus 3 this is a scale prototype they flew it at uh, subsonic speed this time mm -hmm. um at 300 kilometers per second uh, sorry per hour and not second that would be too bad um <laughs> i'm and, glad you um, caught that because i didn't <laughs> yeah so that that's like 160 knots or something so um so basically, they, what they did was modify an existing turbo uh, turbo fan. Um, they, 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 I mean, they eventually are going to make their own fusion, uh, their own power plant. Um, but the, they're basically they use that. They flew for like an hour. So um, uh, did they mention altitude? How high they were doing this? The, the details are are not. You know, I didn't get that many details, but I would like to do some more digging. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, I think it, we should. It, I think it's great. Yeah. yeah they, they, I mean, I mean they had like, sorry, go ahead. No, no, sorry, Rashad, you first. Okay, thanks. So they have like a like a huge team now. So um, they are in continental Europe, so Spain, France, uh, Germany, and Switzerland. Um, so pretty big team. Cool. Definitely wants to watch. Mm -hmm. And I have every reason to believe that, you know, they would also like the coverage and like the awareness that Flying High can bring to their mission statement as well. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm very optimistic about this company. And from a, like an engineering standpoint, they already have a lot of interesting things going on. Like, do you notice the chevrons near at the near the engines? Like, it's like the focus mm -hmm. on reducing mm -hmm. noise as well. Like the already thought out i think quite a lot of yep. the engineering details actually like actually, actually actually david i'm sorry i cut you up but they actually do talk a lot in detail about uh noise reduction in hypersonics mm -hmm. so, Drea, uh, to your uh, point, and i'm uh, sorry to interrupt you rishab but to your point drea wow. they're obviously trying to go high yep <laughs> um because look how much higher they go than traditional yeah. commercial yeah i'm digging it in a lot Oh yeah, and that's another thing that I didn't tell you. They they are uh, a near space vehicle, so they would actually reach lower Earth. Um, that's, that's I mean, like, it's too many too many things uh, to in one podcast. So I just didn't want to say it. Yeah, and well, to do supersonic, you have to go higher. Yeah, um, you do because the shock waves would get messy. Um, if you went lower, there'd be too much drag. So that makes sense. I mean, just love the really like aggressive delta wing layout they got there. They know they're very, they, they do know their hypersonic like airflow properties, like the wings angle so eat down. That's like the wave rider concept that we saw in the Valkyrie bomber prototype from the 60s. So that also, I think, sussed this out. I also like how their logo, you know, how it's like a little I wave. I do too. I was just about to say that. Yeah. It's just like a and wave. It's like that's implying that they're flying high enough to actually skip. Mm -hmm across the atmosphere which saves you know fuel and you know i guess helps the plane become more efficient so all of this like yeah this is very exciting from an engineering standpoint as well it is it is and mm -hmm. i think you know the higher the altitude the lower the shock wave i think if i remember correctly from what was that class I can't even remember what I mean, class it was. It was just nothing. I'm but assuming that has to do with air density. Like the higher you go, air density is going to like decrease exponentially. So it does. Air yep. It's your Reynolds to... number and your um 
it's your Reynolds number and your drag and all of that. And so, because if you think about like in outer space, you don't have a shock wave because it, you're in a vacuum. So right. the closer you get to those conditions, then the Less more insane. efficient you would be because the right. shock wave isn't efficient. Um, so that's really cool. I, I definitely want to learn more about that. And if I messed up any of those comments on my engineering, don't judge me. I'm rusty on that topic. I have not hmm. done supersonic since college. Um, but, it, but I think if I remember correctly, oh, that was such a hard class, but, um, okay, cool. Let's move on to the next article, which is Dabin's pick of the day, e-fuel synthetic fuel from renewable energy sources. All right. So just from that alone, you're probably thinking, I mean, what has Porsche to, you know, have to do with hydrogen? You know, we yeah. have a major automaker and we have green hydrogen and so the interesting yeah, link sorry here is to as off, sorry to yeah. jump in um Dabin, but the reason Dabin said Porsche is because just want to make sure people can see e-fuel synthetic fuel from renewable energy sources and then it goes on to say sustainability at Porsche has many facets okay I just wanted to make sure they caught that part <laughs> Go yeah ahead. so yeah so that this is an article from Porsche's you know like PR center media center and so like, I'm also like a huge automotive like buff. And I was like, you know, can we combine these two passions, renewable hydrogen and like the automotive sector? And believe it or not, Porsche is committing very strongly to e-fuels. And just to explain that simply, e-fuels are carbon neutral hydrocarbon like fuel. So gasoline, kerosene, all of the stuff that we use in our current planes, our internal combustion engines or jet engines, they're all basically long strings of hydrogen and carbon mixed together. And Porsche, what they're trying to do is to get carbon extracted from the air combined with renewable hydrogen, so green hydrogen, in order to create synthetic gasoline that is carbon neutral since it takes carbon from the air and will be used, will, will be usable in all existing combustion engines. So this is kind of like, I would say it's a holy grail of like oh, it's, green it's hydrogen's really usage yeah. almost, just allowing what already exists to become green, you know, complementing like a sector that has been vilified for so long for its carbon emissions. The, I, I, I gotta show this because it, I agree, it is a holy grail. Um, I just put in kerosene chemical structure and I don't know if these are exactly kerosene, it gave me a bunch of different ones, but carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen. So if right. you have your, if you're getting your carbon out of the environment, and I'm just explaining this to the people that are listening that might be saying, why is it the Holy Grail? If you're getting your carbon, pulling it out of the environment. So you're basically reducing the carbon that's going, you know, would, it, would be a greenhouse gas. You're pulling that back and then combining it with green hydrogen you're able to create a, a hydrocarbon basically sustainably, correct? Exactly. So now, but now even if you're burning this, the fuel, now, when you, you wouldn't now, when be you adding to the carbon. So let me just ask this real quick. When you burn that, then you have to, you just keep capturing the carbon so that it doesn't ever add more carbon. Because right. like when you burn the carbon that, just keeps cycling around. You burn it, carbon is released, you recapture it, carbon is stored back into fuel. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest catch to that is Porsche is explaining that this e-fuel is not just simply to help, you know, petrol engines or combustion engines to survive into the future. They're also positioning it as an alternative to batteries because renewable energies, I mean, like solar, wind, we know that they're quite peaky, they're unreliable, they're not, they don't produce energy at a constant base rate, which right. is why they've been so difficult to apply, you know, at, you know, massive scales, like industrial levels. Yeah. But if we can store that energy, even a fraction of that renewable energy in gasoline, then already that the case for renewable energy itself grows much larger. And I mean, as, you know, hydrogen, like, supporters, I believe, you know, we 
are definitely going to be a piece in this larger push towards e-fuels and overall it's very promising so i just wanted to bring up this article just to get everyone thinking about the additional directions in which hydrogen can benefit the world the part that i don't understand <clears throat> is why they're calling it e-fuels when usually when i see the e i think of electric but this doesn't sound electric do you know uh, why it is sound? i guess i guess that the label e comes from the fact that hydrogen will be produced using renewable sources okay so okay. like renewable electricity and the carbon too like the carbon capture technology will have to be based similarly on renewable okay. energy hence why it's gasoline produced electrically hence Mm. E fuel. Ah, okay. Yeah, so they're electric. So the E is for electric. Okay, I always get E was for em environmental or something. So E still no. is for electric. I mean, okay. it could also it could also mean okay. environmental. I think they intended Just multiple sure. meanings behind the E. But... <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are they're they were called electrofuels to, to be started. You know, when they, okay. Um. So uh, they just got. I guess it's just the jargon bandwagon. Right. And also it's like the marketing stuff, you know, attach mm -hmm. E to it, like the prefix, you know, you no, get that. E, yeah, that's gotten very popular. <laughs> the pre is, is either the E or the I. Either the I. Right. Now, what do you think of this picture? Why is he holding up like what looks like a pill bottle? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you could say that he's, you know, shilling this, but I mean, that is gasoline that has been produced solely using electric means. Oh, so okay. Carbon neutral gasoline. I totally thought it was like a pill bottle. That's so funny. No, well, it kind of is, but it's yeah, got something in it. <laughs> yeah, the photograph is definitely misleading, I would say, but yeah, that is perhaps the future I, I, of hydrogen. Actually, that's absolutely. That the bottle is, is a common and that's a common um reagent uh, bottle in the in the lab so mm -hmm. this this has a the, the, you see the cap it has mm -hmm. it has a it has a unique mechanism of uh, like uh, um of, of being Push airtight and then turn, uh -huh. right? yeah it's very airtight and also it it also resists any uh, gas buildup within the within the jar oh, wow. and the jar actually the this jar is also very thick it's like three to four millimeters mm -hmm. top bore silicate so um this is used for holding you know even like very very uh toxic um uh, organic solvents so yeah. this is a this common common mean? you know no idea i mean yeah we, we can only think yes <laughs> what what did you say, Rishav? We're doing forensics on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's super cool. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. excited about this, and mm -hmm. it is a it's a really good find. Uh, I and I'm wondering. Okay, so let's see. It says synthetic fuels that have the potential to be nearly nearly carbon neutral. Nearly mm -hmm. keyword there. And that yeah. are made from CO two and hydrogen using renewable energy sources. What rule? What what role will e fuels play at portion the future? So they don't really say what's in the bottle. Is this on the market or is it for them? Well, I mean, according to the article, Porsche is starting to commercial like commercially produce this e fuel, aka okay. gasoline, and they have been putting it into their cars already. To cool. see that it works perfectly fine so yeah it's a first small step to a potential industry changer right. or i guess industry preserver more and that like. the nascar crasher i think would be great yeah. send a case of that yeah. to nascar <laughs> so awesome. yeah yeah for sure yeah nascar yeah. i think they're gonna love that you know if they can run their cars on like nearly carbon neutral fuel <laughs> as well well, speaking mm. of NASCAR, I now I'm remembering um, something that Drea brought to my attention yesterday, which was um, Maca. That yeah, Maca. Um, our Maca. This is a hydrogen powered flying race car. Has just mm. partnered with Red Bull. Not just, but I think it was unveiled at CES this past mm -hmm. this past January. Well, that's exciting because this officially puts Red Bull into the EV tall space. And um, 
it's funny that we didn't have this on our list of articles to cover, but it, it just- And the hydrogen, in. yeah. So, it's great. Um, yeah, so it's like, we're seeing, we we just saw Ford announced recently that they're investing in hydrogen or looking at hydrogen. I think they're doing a feasibility study. Um, Red Bull's involved in the EV tall space. And it's sort of, hydrogen, just, it's yeah, all yeah. really yeah. converging and it's just so exciting. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a mean looking design. Yeah, it's really cool. I met them uh, at 2022 CES, and I was there for them to win an award and actually got to party with some of their executives, so that was fun. Um, they're yeah. a really cool team. It looks like a tricopter, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm. Nice. You guys have all seen the stunt the stunt races with the stunt planes and the pilots that'll fly like at they be like at Texas Motor Speedway. They'll have like agility courses, races, and they time trial races over kind of like what your dog would do, you know, just stunts for planes. This is what they're this is what they're gonna be able to do with that. And Red Bull sponsors those, those flight, those um pilot trials that are for um the best pilots to test their skills and, and race their they do some incredible stunts in these really small planes and i've always watched them and red bull's always sponsored them well now red bull's on the hydrogen boom i can do it so i'm really excited about that that deal yeah that's great that yeah. they're taking on red this bull, red bull is giving them wings huh <laughs> <laughs> that's and, great <laughs> and also that's like again like a car aficionado i just want to say racing is one of the best ways to get these big companies to adopt like right. cutting edge technology so i'm really excited yeah. for this yeah well, and you know Dre's son and grandson are big time racers which is why wow. she's been passionate about following the racing space and right I i'm trying to get them to drive to drive with hydrogen too we have to do some modifications on their car but you know why not somebody's going to start that so they, they're for yeah, it let me see it. if this let me pull up a picture um <laughs> Sand race. Dre's, Dre's grandson, oh. four years old. Oh, he's four. Yeah, four years old, driving, racing already. He wins a lot. Yeah. yeah. So pretty soon, we like to see him uh flying. Well, cool. Um, yeah, that's it too. <laughs> really great podcast, you all. Um, really enjoyed today, and thank you so much for joining us again. Happy World Environment Day. Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. And World Environment Day. So just watch your plastics, y'all. <laughs> that's yeah, what, that's our goal every day, really. But today specifically, yeah. Yeah, we planted yeah. some plants, flowers today. It's a good yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. See you soon. Thank All you. Right. This is great information. Bye. I'm so excited for the future. <laughs> Bye.